Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Sony and the A6500 lineup. We've heard a lot of talk lately about the A7 III, and for good reason. It's an amazing camera, amazingly specced camera at an incredible price point. Uh, great value. We've discussed it uh, quite a bit, and it's a very interesting camera. My good friend Peter Gregg has one now, and he's loving it. I haven't really heard any negatives from him about that camera. But it brings up a good point. I've been thinking about the A6500, which is especially in Sony terms of time for release, their release schedule, is getting kind of long in the tooth. It's been out for a while. Where's our A6600? I don't know if that's what they're going to call it. Maybe they'll go right to an A67 because we went from 6300 to 6500. Maybe it's an A6700. Maybe we should call it that for now. But I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, what are we going to get here? Because typically... For me and for value, I like that price point. Although the A7 III really makes you think about that because for $2,000, you're getting a heck of a camera and it's full frame. However, we've got Bruno writing in in the comments on one of the videos. And he says, uh, what I do know is that Canon and Nikon are in trouble. They have to release something to compete with Sony and time is running out fast for them. I am pretty sure Sony is constantly working hard and we will soon see the successor of the A6500. And it will surely be a killer camera with all new technology Sony has packed in their recent cameras. Wonderful autofocus system, incredibly fast frames per second. I honestly don't know if Canon has time to reverse the situation. So this was a comment in response to some of the videos we've been discussing about the Canon mirrorless systems, what might come in, in the updates for the 90D, the 7D Mark III. And it was an interesting comment from Bruno. Thanks very much, Bruno. Um, because it made me think again about the A6500 successor and the fact that we don't have it yet. Let's call it the A6700. To review, to recap, the 6500, 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, 425 phase detection points for autofocus. We got a 2.36 million dot OLED EVF. We've got a tilting rear touchscreen, 5-axis in-body image stabilization. We got 11 frames per second continuous shooting for up to 300 JPEGs or 100 RAWs and a 1 4,000th of a second maximum shutter speed. Not a bad spec camera even by current standards right now and it's 4k uh was that mentioned in there wasn't that wasn't mentioned as a key feature 4k so we got a, a, a very good 4k i should point out so decent specs here which makes you wonder what can we see in a 67 is it going to be more of a a refresh more like a mark ii of an a6500 um i think we can see quite a few things that it would make it quite relevant and quite interesting as an APS-C offering from Sony. I think we'll see a faster yet autofocus system. Sony very rarely releases a new camera without claiming it to be even faster than the previous one. Probably more autofocus points. So I think we'll see a refined AF system. It's already very good in the 6500, but I'm pretty sure Sony will tweak it even better. We got built-in five uh, axis image stabilization. It's already very good. It's an excellent system. But I wouldn't be at all surprised if Sony gives us a new and improved version of that. I don't know if they'll call it something different or just say they've made improvements, but I suspect they will say they've done something to it to tweak it, to make it better. Maybe a whole new system. Who knows? But I think we'll see an improvement there. 24 megapixels. I've been saying for a while I think it's time to see a 30 megapixel sensor. I think Sony would be one of the contenders to do that with their new, uh, you know, their BSI sensors. Like, look at the um, A7 III. It didn't move up the megapixels, but it improved technology such that it gave us the 24 megapixels and made it basically, uh, made the A7S obsolete because it's a 24 megapixel camera that is as good or, or, or very close to anyways, the 12 megapixel low light king they had in the A7S. So I think maybe we could see a 30 megapixel sensor this begs the question you know we, we would get the argument who wants more megapixels versus who would just like better performance i would like both i would like more megapixels and better high iso i guess really in the end i'm fine with it staying at 24 it gives them more bragging rights i think if they go to 30 but 24 with better high iso and better iq better dynamic range is probably a better way to go but i think we're going to see an improvement in the sensor I think for sure we'll see an improvement in the sensor. 4K, it's already really, really good 4K video on the A6500. 
but I think we're going to see tweaks and improvements there too. Maybe more megabits in the encoding, maybe a better codec, maybe more ability with S logs and things like that. They're going to give us, we're going to see refinement in it. Sony just is very good at always giving us refinement. So the video will be even better, I suspect. The One of the biggest things, perhaps the biggest thing that I think Sony could do, but I'm not sure if they are aware of it or would acknowledge this as an issue, is if they put a better kit lens on that. If they came out with something that had a kit lens as good as the 18-55 to from Fuji, and they, they gave that to us with the 6700, let's call it the 6700, as a kit at a good price, that would be amazing and would actually alleviate one of my major concerns with Sony, which is that it costs a lot of money to get into decent lenses compared to Canon and Nikon. Next up, the higher ISO. That goes hand in hand with our improved sensor. I think we're going to see um, higher ISO abilities. If we look at what's happening with the A7R3, the A7 III, the A9, all these cameras are better and better image quality, better high ISO abilities. We're going to see that as well in the new iteration of the 6500. It'll just, you know, tech is moving forward. Sony always gives us more every time. And they are the ones really pushing the envelope as far as release dates on this. So we're going to see it. Uh, battery life is a big area they could improve. Um, it's always been a bit of a weak point for Sony. And it's getting better, especially with the A7 III. Um, and I think we'll see that improved in the update to the 6500. I think we'll get a better battery. I think it's time. <laughs> I don't know if we'll get the same battery, a newer version that's got better battery life, or if we'll actually see an all-new battery in the 67. That in itself will upset some people. Personally, I'd rather see a better battery and go to and you know get a new one if it was significantly better. The viewfinder um, is excellent, but I think we could still get a higher res, better version of that. Remember, this is the top of the line for Sony's APS-C cameras. So we can see better and more improvements in that as well. Get a better EVF, better viewfinder. And then the monitor. Uh, the monitor's decent, always room for more resolution, but the big thing they could do here is they could make it a first. It could be the first fully articulated uh, LCD on this line of cameras, on most of their cameras. I think it's very, might have been an older DSL, uh, one of their other older DSL style cameras that might have had, I'm thinking maybe if it was a 60, A65 or something. I had an older one I think did have fully articulated, but anything I've seen in recent years, this is that's why I can't even remember if it was, because it's been a while. But that would be a big, big selling feature and a big improvement over the flip-ups. We need fully articulated touchscreen LCD from Sony. These points, what are there, nine, ten of them, would make for an awesome refresh to the 6500. Let's call it the A6700. This would make for a great A6700. The biggest one for me would be a better kit lens, to be honest with you. But what do you guys think? Do you think that I've built the perfect A6700 here? Is there something I've missed that you guys would like to see in the refresh to the 6500? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if there's something I've missed. Let me know if there's something I've thrown in that you think isn't necessary. Let me know what you think in general. Are you waiting on the 6700? Has the A7 Mark III made that line of cameras moot to you? You would just step up and spend more money and get an A7 III. Let me know what you think. Comments below. Looking forward to hearing your feedback. And stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.